Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. And this video is brought to you by Skillshare. When we think of the recorder, we tend to think of this size, right? The soprano. No. No, don't worry, I'm not going to do that. We often start on the soprano today, but did you know it was actually the alto that was the main size of recorder historically? It's lower, richer, deeper. And its lowest note is F compared to the soprano C. <laughs> Squeak. This sweet and expressive instrument was the size of record of favour by composers in the Baroque era. And it was really a solo instrument accompanied either by a continuo setup or even an orchestra. Let's hear some examples. So that's it, that's the alto recorder. And um, well, this is also an alto recorder. And uh, this, wait. I see I have a little bit more explaining to do, but first let's start off simple. How do we read it? The alto is in F. This basically means if you close all the holes and play a scale up, we hear the scale of F major. Yes, some recorders do have extra keys on the bottom to extend the range, but that doesn't change the overall key of the instrument or how we read it. This is different from the soprano recorder in C, which is like a flute or an oboe, but no worries. I mean, we're in F rather than C. We have the music transposed for us, right? Right? Wrong! Recorder players actually learn a whole new set of fingerings for the alto rather than having the music transposed for us. Watch this. In playing the same piece on different recorders, we use different fingerings. Why? It's because our brains are so big. No, in all seriousness, I don't know exactly why. It's how we've always tended to do it. Check out my video, how to play all the notes on the recorder for both the soprano and alto. It just hit 1 million views, everybody. What? If you're new to the alto, are you allowed to play soprano fingerings on it? Yes, of course. I do that sometimes too, especially if I really want the sound of an alto on the specific piece. And if you're playing alone at home, it's fine, do whatever you like. If you're playing with other people though, or with a backing track, you are going to need to play the right pitches, otherwise it will sound <coughs> ouch. But how has the alto always been played? Did it always look like this? I'd like to take you back in time, approximately 500 years to the Renaissance, Ta-da! This is a Renaissance recorder, also in F. You can see that it has a wider bore. This both gives it a broader sound, but a smaller range. And those of you with perfect pitch will hear that it's one semitone higher than the recorders we use today. This is because it's tuned in high Renaissance pitch. The A is 466 hertz. Woo! This gives it a brighter sound. In the Renaissance, recorders weren't used as solo instruments so much, but as part of a consort or ensemble. This would mainly be polyphonic music where each voice in the ensemble is independently weaving in and out of the others a style anchored in vocal music, so each instrument would take on the role of a voice. Today, we call that soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Historically, these voices could have different names, the high discantus, the low sextus, but an alto refers to a high voice, often the second highest. So the names of the instruments don't refer to a specific pitch, this is an F, but to its role in the group. And pictures at the time were not fixed. If you played in the local church, you had to fit with the organ. 
if you were with singers, you had to fit their vocal ranges. So they varied from place to place. Of course, the instruments had to fit with one another. A recorder consort at the time was often tuned in fifths. A common combination would be a bassette recorder in F, a tenor recorder in C, and then an alto recorder in G. G, an alto in G. These instruments stacked in fifths would give a bright, sweet sound and because they're in different keys, you'd end up using different fingerings which would mean a really nice mix of textures. Altos in G were therefore very common. In fact, in the treatise Musica Instrumentalis by Agricola, he gives a table of fingerings for the recorder in G. And before you ask, do us professional recorder players learn a whole new set of fingerings for G altos? Yes, we do. Either reading a tone lower or a seventh higher. We can do it both ways. Okay, I've been cheating. Aficionados amongst you will be looking at this G alto, no doubt, and saying, but Sarah, that looks like a transitional alto from the 17th century. And you'd be right. Coming into the early Baroque period, we're seeing a shift in the role of the recorder away from the consorts and more towards being a solo instrument with continuo accompaniment. We're starting to see sonatas, but the sheet music for these sonatas would usually be published for a solo instrument, meaning recorder or flute or oboe or violin or cornetto. Why? Because it's good business. So this is a transitional G alto made by Stefan Bletzinger. It's made to have the same broad sound as a Renaissance alto, but with the wider range and fingering of a Baroque recorder. Basically, it means I can play high and fast. <laughs> Moving into the Baroque period, the 18th century, the recorders from now look like the ones we see today. And indeed, today's recorders are based on Baroque designs. You can see the bore is getting smaller, which though it gives a softer sound, it increases the range. These are some examples of Baroque recorders modelled after the maker Denner. And the maker Bressan. And those of you with perfect pitch will no doubt notice that yes, we are now a semitone lower than modern pitch. We're in Baroque pitch, A equals 415 hertz. Can we hear all three at once? Uh. I'm filled with regret. Most surviving repertoire from the Baroque period is written for the alto recorder. It's the recorder specified in treatises, method books that taught you how to play it, quants, hot a tear, and virtually all printed music aimed at amateur players was for the alto. Various other sizes of recorder from the sopranino down to the big basses were still played, but this was done by the professionals. And it makes sense. An amateur player would most likely have one instrument to play on, unless they were very, very rich. And this is how we know so much about recorders from the time, through inventories of rich people's houses. In David Lasocki's amazing book, Not Just the Alto, he's made a table showing that only 56% of surviving recorders, the actual instruments, were altos. The rest were all various stuff, yet all the music was aimed at alto players. Hmm. I think this shows that the decision of what to put down on paper was aimed to appeal to the masses. What about our altos in G? Are they still around? Yes, they are, but now they're referred to as second flutes, with the alto in F being the first flute. They're not as common. There is an early 18th century manuscript written by composer and arranger Edward Finch, in which he gives a transposition chart for an alto recorder in E flat, a whole tone lower than the consort flute and an alto in G, a whole tone higher than the consort flute. This shows us a few things. The alto in F was seen as the standard size. Altos in G and E flat existed. 
And also that people sometimes did have the music transposed for them. And in the second half of the 18th century, we also seen the third flute, Ted's flute, um, or the alto in A being mentioned. Alto in A. I don't have one to show you, but I've actually never played on one. And today, we recorder players have been very busy unearthing all of this historical information and repertoire, and the Baroque style of alto recorder is the standard we use today. But there have been developments too. Yes, like a Pokemon, the recorder is evolving into a contemporary form. More on that after we've heard a word from our sponsor. <laughs> I feel so cool saying that. I'd like to introduce you to Skillshare and long-term viewers will know that I've been partnering with them for a while because I love the sheer choice of what they offer. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes that you can follow at your own pace. You can explore your creativity in the areas that you're already into or jump into new skills. So for me, the categories that have jumped out are the video editing tools and the entrepreneurship classes. Um, these I'm gonna be following to keep improving my YouTube game. And of course, music. One of the music classes that has really caught my eye is the Chinese flute, Learn the Chinese Bamboo Flute or Ditsi by Jiang Jingtam. One I thought that you might like is the Music Theory Comprehensive series by Jason Allen. Ah, oh, there's so many! So Skillshare can help make 2022 a year of learning through creativity. If you're excited by this, the first thousand people to click on the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And I just wanna say thank you so much for watching this little bit and for clicking on the link below. Um, doing sponsored content like this helps me to keep Team Recorder afloat and to make sure I can keep making these videos for you. So mwah, back to the recorders. The Mollenhauer Modern Alto is a harmonic recorder, meaning it works on a different overtone system and it has some extra keys to extend the range. The Eagle by Adriana Brokink, it has a huge bore and a metal labium, meaning that it's loud, it blends with other loud instruments and you can play dynamics. And the LED by Mollenhauer even has a built-in microphone so that you can amplify it and add effects. I know, I'm teasing it again, there is a video coming. And there are others that I don't have here to show you. The Helder instruments, the Merck Alert, the Kung E3. Wow. So through all of these developments, the Alto has been our staple for a long time. What should we play on it? If you're just starting out, I really recommend the Alt Blockflöten Reise books by Daniel Hellbach. That's German for Alto Recorder Germany. You don't necessarily need to speak German because it's mainly just music, really good quality choice of pieces and backing CDs. The Renaissance and Baroque Recorder anthologies published by Schott are also really good quality. Uh, not every volume is for Alto, so do check. Where the alto really shines is the Baroque Sonata. And as I've said before, these were often published uh, for a range of instruments, so you are allowed to play any of this. We also play a lot of music originally published for flute that transposed a minor third higher. The reason is the Baroque flute, or traverso, its lowest note is D. To fit on an alto in F, it needs to be a third higher. This sometimes, <laughs> this does bring extra flats into the key signature. Yay. But let's get a little bit more adventurous than your general Baroque sonata. We also have the Brandenburg Concerti by Bach, number two and four feature the recorder. Something so special is the trio for three alto recorders by Johann Matheson. Oh my gosh. The Chacon begins with three altos in unison. I 
I don't talk about this much, but I should. The neoclassical repertoire from early 20th century England. We have gorgeous sonatinas for the alto recorder by Lennox Barclay, Edwin York Bowen, Edmund Robra. It's romantic, it's with the piano, it's a really different flavour to the Baroque. And what about contemporary music? While there's no shortage of music for the alto, it's no longer the dominant size. Composers often favour the lower, deeper tenor recorder as a solo instrument. Some pieces I really love are Kage for alto and tape by Roderick de Man, Sharavki uh, by Calliope Tsupaki, Workshop for alto and tape by Nev McGowan, that's one of my favourites. Austro with circular breathing and reverb by Giorgio Tere. And in chamber music, there's De Putren for recorded trio by Misha Kesa. And even new concerti for the Eagle recorder by Gil Meiring, Vito Palumbo, Thomas Klaassen. And what do you like playing on the alto? Please mention it below. So there we have it. Renaissance, transitional, baroque, modern and thoroughly modern recorders in G, F, A, E flat, or keys, in pictures, 444, 15, 466, for all kinds of music. <gasps> I have definitely missed out a lot, but that's why this video is an introduction. If you want to share information, questions, suggestions, please do so in the comments. And as always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. If you'd like to support Team Recorder, here is the Patreon where there's lots of cool stuff happening and here are some other videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!